Howdy folks, this is Big Sam. Did you know that there's actually two different sizes of Mosin the Gaunt butt plates? So here on the left, we have what we, we're gonna call on the channel a thin style butt plate. And on the right, we have a thick style. So what's the difference here? Well, the thin butt plate is actually corresponds to the 9130 rifle, the Dragoon Rifle, the Cossack Rifle, the Model 1907 Carbine Rifle, the M38 Carbine, the M44 Carbine, and all of its other um, variants, such as the Chinese Type 53. So all of those would use this style of butt plate, and we're calling this the thin one. Now, the M91 rifle, which was the Russian Army's standard-issue infantry rifle during the First World War, would use a thicker style one, which we can see here. And we also see this, which is interesting, on some Finnish rifles. We'll get to that in a second, but first let's compare the sizes to see, um, well, how are these different? So what we can do is take this guy and put him in here. We'll line up this side... We'll look on this side and we can see, oh yeah, there's definitely a difference there. Now, I mentioned that Finland would use this style. Why is that? Well, to understand that, we have to understand Finnish Mosins. And uh, if you haven't already, we have a presentation on the Mosin Nagants that Finland bought. So if you watch that, you might understand this a little bit better. But Finland had a huge abundance of specifically the M91 infantry rifle, not the Dragoon rifle, because they didn't really have many of those. They didn't really buy many of those. And this is back in like the, uh, the 1920s. The 9130 hadn't come around yet. So they have a bunch of rifles that use this type of butt plate. And thus, they have a bunch of parts and extra stocks for rifles with this type of butt plate. Now, one of the things Finland did was build their own variants, such as the M39 rifle and the M27 rifle. And some of those variants used, a lot of times, cut down M91 stocks. Well, they would cut down the front because the barrels were shorter, but the whole back portion actually remained the same. So a lot of those rifles actually use this thicker style of butt plate. So we could, this is a helpful trick because this style is actually pretty hard to find. And what makes this a little more annoying is the fact that just looking at these, like um, when they're not together, you may look at one or the other and depending on how good or bad the pictures are, you may actually have a really hard time just looking at one of these and saying, is this a thin or a thick style butt plate? So how do we, how do you figure that out? Well, a lot of it's just looking at it and kind of understanding the shape and the dimensions. You can kind of, uh, if you look at a hundred of different, each of these, yeah, eventually you'll be able to get to a point where you can probably eyeball one and say, yeah, I think that's a thick style or no, I think that's a thin style. But it can get really annoying. But a pro tip, if you're if you have, let's say, a brand new M39 finish M39 stock, and it doesn't have a butt plate, a lot of the ones that get sold as spare parts or spare stocks don't have butt plates. You actually need to find this type. Sometimes the thin ones actually won't fit on the rifle properly. Uh, so the M39, this is this is actually a finish M39 butt plate. They would use this on the M39 as well. Uh, even though, which is interesting, the M39 stocks, remember they had a semi-pistol grip. Those were all new production stocks, but they still used these thicker style. And why? Well, mainly because it's what they had. They didn't have a lot of money. They didn't say, well, we don't need a thicker style. Let's go try to find a bunch of thinner styles. No, that, no. They, they used what they had. And it's fine because the M39 stocks are actually pretty beefy if you've ever handled one. So these are very well suited for that type of thing. 
And if you have to hit something with the butt of your rifle, you want a thicker style butt plate anyway. It's going to give you a, a better hitting surface, right? Anyway, that's just a pro tip to look out for. So any type of finish rifle, like an M27, an M28, or anything like that, you probably need this style of butt plate. Now, the other thing here is, and we'll get to this in our next video on Mosin Nagant butt plates, there's actually different variants of the Mosin Nagant 9130 butt plate. And in a future video, we'll take a look at what that is and why that is. Um, let's go ahead and take a little bit of a closer look at these now and see if we can decipher anything from them. So we know that this would be, by the markings, we can see that this was made by the Izhevsk factory. And we have this lovely serial number here. So the Izhevsk marking tells us that this butt plate would have been made sometime after 1928. But we can see here that we have a two Cyrillic character prefix. This is RA in Russian. And what this tells us is this butt plate was produced during or after 1938, because 1938 is the year that the Russian factory started putting a two Cyrillic character prefix in front of serial numbers. So this was made sometime after 1938. Um, so this could be for a 9130 rifle. This could be for a M38 carbine or an M44 carbine. So that would be the three types of rifles that this could be for. But, uh, without going into what our next topic is, that's about what we can decipher on this one. Now let's look at this guy. He has some really interesting markings. Here we have a serial number. Now, the very early Mosin Nagants, like the antique ones, would actually have serial numbers stamped here in the middle, like this. But a lot of times they're just gone. So being able to see one is a real treat. That's cool. We have a 4 and a W here. These are unknown markings, but um, these are not Russian. So there's a, there's we know what we know, and we don't know what we don't know, but we know that these are not Russian, and they're probably not Finnish, because Finland didn't really um, do this type of thing, as far as we know. Um, and if we look on the top here we can see there's our little Tula hammer. So we know this butt plate was definitely produced uh, before 1928, but it's we know it's, it's much older than that. Uh, primarily, again, because of this serial number. This is probably belongs to an antique rifle or something to that effect. Uh, certainly very old, over 100 years old. And then we have some other weird markings, a Circle K... Pro here in America, we have a Circle K gas station. I don't think that's what that indicates, probably. Um, then there's this another little 5 there, and it looks like it could be an I or a T. These are other kind of unknown markings that we'll just have to study more Mohs and Nagants to see which types have these and which not, to see if there's any way we can kind of decipher which uh, ones of these are. That's the kind of thing we enjoy on this channel. Because there's so many interesting markings on Mosin Nagants that we just don't know about. So a lot of these are just truly fascinating to study. And sometimes you'll be surprised that you'll find similar markings in totally different places that you didn't expect. And there's a lot of horrible grease and other things there. Wonderful. So thanks for watching, guys. Now you know the difference between the thin and and the thick style Mosin Nagant butt plates. Let me know if y'all have any Mosin Nagant questions. Feel free to shoot me an email anytime. Let me know if y'all have any prayer requests. And I'll see you next time.